Good morning to all. I am Dr. M. Ashok Kumar, Senior Resident, Department of Anesthesiology, Sri Lakshminarayana Institute of Medical Science, Puducherry. Today, I am going to talk about pulmonary function test. Pulmonary function test, it provides standardized measurement for assessing the presence and severity of respiratory disease. It includes wide variety of objective tests to assess function because it is a standardized measurement for assessing the respiratory dysfunction. It having wide variety of objective tests to assess the functions of pulmonary. Then goals of pulmonary function test. The main goal is to predict the presence of pulmonary dysfunction. And also to know the functional nature of disease, either obstructive lung disease or restrictive lung disease. And also to assess the severity and progression of disease. And to identify the patients with perioperative risk of pulmonary complication. The main goals of pulmonary function test is nothing but to predict the presence of pulmonary dysfunction and also to know the functional nature of disease which is either obstructive lung disease or restrictive lung disease and also to assess the severity and progression of disease. Particularly in lung carcinoma, before proceeding to surgery, we look for the pulmonary function test, mainly predictive postoperative FEV1. This will guide the assessment as well as severity and progression of disease to predict postop pulmonary complications. So, PFD is used in lung carcinoma, one lung ventilation or lung carcinoma surgeries. And also to identify the perioperative risk of pulmonary complication. In obesity surgeries, it is mainly used to predict the perioperative risk of pulmonary function and also in lung surgeries. For organ transplant or any pneumonectomy, it is mainly used in, in pulmonary function is mainly used. Pulmonary function tests are really wonderful tests, but they do not act alone. It requires, it mainly acts only to support or exclude a diagnosis. A combination of thorough physical and history, history and physical examination as well as supporting laboratory data and imaging will help in the dialysis. It is a wonderful test, but they do not support the diagnosis. It only support the diagnosis but again that main diagnostic test because it combines with history as well as physical examination for as well as supporting laboratory and imaging health to establish a diagnosis but it is not act alone because it's not main diagnostic test but it only support or exclude the diagnosis. Indication of pulmonary function test in pre anesthetic checkup. In, according to GM PASA guidelines in 1979, for patients who undergo PFT, includes there is a following indication mainly old age, that is nothing but age more than 70 years, or morbid obesity patients, that is nothing but BMI more than 40, and in patients undergoing thoracic surgeries like lung transplant surgery, pneumonectomy, or any cardiovascular surgeries, it is mainly used, as well as upper abdominal surgeries, mainly laparoscopic polycystectomy or open polycystectomy or splenectomy or any other abdominal procedure, it is mainly used. And patients having smoking history and as well as cough, uh, PF, PFT in, in the pulmonary function test is indicated in pre anesthetic checkup. And patient having any pulmonary disease like COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or bronchial asthma, or any other bronchial disease, or any other condition, the patient will undergo this. Main indication of PFT in pre anesthetic checkup, according to GMTASA guideline, 1979 guidelines, is old age that is nothing but age more than 70 years. Next will be the morbid obesity. Next will be the like 
BMI more than body or morbid obesity. Next, thoracic surgery, mainly um, lung transplant surgery or cardiac transplant or coronary artery bypass grafting or any pneumonectomy or segmental lung, lung surgeries or any other thoracic surgery, primary function should, test should be indicated. And upper abdominal surgeries like laparoscopic or open cholecystectomy, splenectomy, any other abdominal procedure, primary function test is mainly indicated. And presence of chronic history of any smoking history and to know the obstructive or restrictive lung disease, mainly PFD issues and also patient having chronic history of cough to rule out chronic bronchitis or emphysema or any other conditions and patient having any history of non pulmonary disease like bronchitis, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases or emphysema or any other conditions. Tuberculosis, PFD is mainly indicated. And indications for perioperative spirometry according to American College of Physician guidelines for preoperative respiratory. Perioperative spirometry mainly patients undergo lung dissection or patients having chronic history of smoking or patients having any history of dyspnea or patients having any cardiac surgery or patients having cardiac surgeries like any coronary artery bypass surgery or any valve surgeries like mitral valve replacement. Uh, or percutaneous um, mitral valvulotomy or balloon mitral valvulotomy or any other procedures or coronary artery bypass lifting uh, spirometry preoperatively indicated or patients having any upper or lower abdominal surgeries upper abdominal surgery like laparoscopic cholecystectomy or open cholecystectomy or splenectomy or any kidney surgeries or any lower abdominal surgeries like hernia, electively planned for lower segment cesarean section, it should be indicated. Our patient having uncharacterized pulmonary disease, that is, history of chronic pulmonary disease or symptoms, and no PFT in last disease. The main indication of preoperative spirometry, according to the American College of Physician Guidelines. Mainly include patient undergoing lung resection like pneumonectomy or segmental lung resection and or marginal lung resection. Or patients having any chronic history of smoking more than 40 pack years. Or patients having any difficulty in breathing or dyspnea. Or patients are undergoing any cardiac surgeries like coronary artery bypass surgery or any mitral valve replacement or percutaneous uh, balloon mitral valvuloplasty or any other cardiac surgeries and patients undergoing any upper abdominal surgeries like laparoscopic cholecystectomy or open cholecystectomy and osplenectomy or any other procedure and patients undergoing any lower abdominal surgery like inguinal hernia surgeries or appendicectomy, they have pretty spirometry should be indicated. And uncharacterized pulmonary diseases, having patients having history of pulmonary disease or symptom and no PFT in last experience. Then, what are the contraindications of performance of pyromet? Patients having any history of thoraco abdominal surgeries or patient having any recent eye surgery or patient having MI within the last one month or patient having history of unstable angina within the last one month or patient having any history of active immobilization or patient having any. Next, we look. So we can we already see the indications of pyrometry. Next, we can see the contraindicates for the performance of pyrometry includes patient having any history of thoraco abdominal surgery or recent eye surgery or MI within the last one month or unstable angina within the one month or active hemoptysis or pneumothorax. Next will be the objectives of pulmonary function test. Following objectives are lung volume and capacities, bedside pulmonary function test, then categorization of pulmonary function test. Next will be the flow volume. Group. 
So that main objectives we want to know. First will be the lung of volume and capacities. Then next will be the pulmonary function test. Then then we will the categorization of pulmonary function test. Next will be the flow volume loop. We can see a one by one for the flow volume slide. Lung first we can see the lung volume because we already studied in you are already studied in first year physiology there will be a four lung volume capacities and five four lung volume and five capacities addition of two or more volume compresses capacity a four lung volume will be tidal volume what is tidal volume you already studied in first year physiology. Okay, I will explain. This is the volume of air inhaled or expired during quiet breathing. Then next will be the inspiratory reserve volume. Inspiratory reserve volume is volume of air inspired above the normal tidal volume. What is expiratory reserve volume? Okay, expiratory reserve volume is nothing but volume of air uh, expired above the normal tidal volume. What is residual volume? Okay, let me let me explain. The residual volume is nothing but volume of air expired after maximal expiration. What is functional residual capacity? Okay, functional residual capacity it is similar to the residual volume. It is nothing but volume of air normally expired. Volume of expired volume of air remain in the lungs after normal expiration. In residual volume, it is the volume of air remaining in the lung after maximum expiration. Okay. What is inspiratory capacity? Okay, inspiratory capacity is nothing but tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. What is expiratory capacity?
Okay, expiratory capacity nothing but tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume. What is vital capacity? Okay, vital capacity is nothing but addition of tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume. What is total lung capacity? Okay, total lung capacity is nothing but addition of all volumes. Nothing but tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume, and as well as residual volume. What is functional residual capacity? Functional residual capacity is nothing but volume of air remaining in the lungs after normal expiration. It is addition of residual volume plus expiratory reserve volume. What is residual reserve volume? Residual volume is nothing but volume of air remaining in the lungs after maximal expiration. Okay, addition of two or more volumes compresses capacity. Then proceed to next slide. Then tidal volume. Define tidal volume. Tidal volume is nothing but volume of air inhaled or exhaled in each breath during quiet breathing or respiration. Normal tidal volume is around 6 to 8 ml per kg. Then, tidal volume falls in condition where there is a decrease in compliance or decrease in ventilatory muscle strength. This is the most important mm, parameter in permeable is nothing but tidal volume. That is, volume of air. Inhaled or exhaled in each breath during quiet respiration. Normal volume around 6 to 8 ml per kg. Adult around 500 ml. Tidal volume falls in a condition with a decrease in compliance or decrease in ventilatory muscle strength. And this is the graph showing all the lung volume and capacity. This is the normal tidal volume. That is volume of air inhaled or exhaled during quiet breathing. This is normal volume. This is 6 to 8. 6 to 8 ml per kg. In adult around 500 ml. This is the inspiratory reserve volume. It is nothing but volume of air. Inspired above a normal tidal volume. This is a normal tidal volume, which is volume of air inspired above a normal tidal volume, nothing but inspired reserve volume. Then next will be the expired reserve volume. It is the volume of air expired above a normal tidal volume. Normal inspired reserve volume is around 3000 ml, and normal expired reserve volume is around 1000 under ml. Then next will be the residual volume. It is the volume of air remaining in the lungs. After maximum expiration, after maximum expiration, only 1200 ml will be remaining in the lungs. And next will be the functional residual capacity. It is nothing but volume of air remaining in the lungs after normal expiration. Its value is nothing but addition of both residual volume and expiratory reserve volume. It is around 1200 plus 1100, around 2300. 
and inspiratory capacity is nothing but addition of tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. It is addition total 500 plus 3000 equal 3500. Then vital capacity is nothing but addition of tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume. It is nothing but addition of 500 plus 3000 plus 1000 total 4000. Then total lung capacity is nothing but addition of tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume, as well as residual volume. Total amount is around 500 plus 3000, 3500, 3500 plus 1000 and 2000, 3500 plus 1000, 4600, 4600 plus 1200, around 5800. This is the four lung volume, residual volume first, then next will be the expiratory reserve volume, next will be the tidal volume, then will be the inspiratory reserve volume. Total addition of all gives about total lung capacity. RV is nothing but residual volume, ERV is nothing but expiratory reserve volume, PT is nothing but tidal volume, IRV is nothing but inspiratory reserve volume. Next, proceed to inspiratory reserve volume. It is nothing but maximum volume of air which can be inspired after normal tidal inspiration from the end inspiratory point. It is nothing but volume of air inhaled after inspiration from above the normal tidal volume. Normal tidal volume is around 500. It is inspired above the normal tidal volume. So, normal value will be 1900 ml to 3000. In the previous step, we can show the inspiratory reserve volume. Then next will be the expiratory reserve volume. It is similar to inspiratory reserve volume. This is volume of air expired after normal tidal expiration from the end expiratory point. It is nothing but volume of air. Expired after normal tidal reserve volume is not of air. Expired after normal tidal volume. Normal volume around 700 to 1000 ml. Then next will be the residual volume. Residual volume is nothing but volume of air remaining in the lung after maximum expiration. Normal volume around 1700 or 2100 ml. In ml per kg, it is 40 to 45 ml per kg. It is indirectly measured functional residual capacity minus expiratory reserve volume. That is functional residual capacity, nothing but expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. Residual volume also calculated by mm, functional residual capacity minus expiratory reserve volume. Residual volume is not measured by spirometry. Similarly, functional residual capacity and also total lung capacity cannot be measured by the desperate spirometry. Uh, any lung volume and capacity is having residual volume, it cannot be measured by spirometry. This is the residual volume. This is normal volume of air remaining in the lung after maximum expiration. Normal volume around 1200 or 40 to 45 ml. Then next will be the inspiratory capacity. It is nothing but maximum volume of air which can be inspired after normal tidal expiration. Inspiratory capacity is nothing but tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. Normal value around 2400 to 3800 ml. It can detect extra thoracic airway obstruction. It can change parallel in PC. The inspiratory capacity. It is nothing but volume of air. Maximum volume of air can be expired after in expiratory position. This is the end expiratory position.
Total capacity is nothing but maximum volume of air expired after maximum inspiration. It is an addition of tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. Normal capacity around 3,100 ml to 4,800 ml. That is 60 to 70 ml per kg. It is a vital capacity. It is nothing but maximum volume of air. It can be expired after maximum inspiration. That is addition of tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume. It is 500 plus 3000 plus 1000 under total 4600. Next will be the inspiratory reserve volume. Sorry. Next we proceed to factor influencing vital capacity. Physiological factors including vital capacity. It is a physical dimension, it includes physical dimension which is directly proportional to height. Six, vital capacity more in males because of large chest size and more muscle power. Next factor will be age, it decreases with the increasing age. Then, based on also. Strength of respiratory muscle also affect the vital capacity. Question, especially decreases in supine position. Pregnancy, unchanged or increases by 10 percent. Increase due to increase in AP diameter in pregnancy. Physiological factors including vital capacities based on dimensions, particularly direct proportion to height. For particular sex, male, it is more due to large chest size and more muscle power. For in age, Based on age, it decreases with the increasing age. Strength of respiratory muscles also affect the vital capacity. In posture, it decreases, especially in supine position. In pregnancy, it is unchanged or decreased by 10%. And next will be the clinical significance of vital capacity. Right. Clinical significance nothing but vital capacity correlates with capability of deep breathing as well as effective power. Patients having adequate vital capacity can be determined based on clinically because of deep breathing and effective power. So in post-operative period, vital capacity falls below the three times the normal tidal volume. Artificial respiration should be needed to maintain airway tidal situation. What is the clinical significance means? The vital capacity is directly correlated with capability for deep breathing as well as effective gas. We can correlate correctly with vital capacity for deep breathing and effective gas. Also, in post operative patient, if vital capacity falls three times below the tidal volume, then artificial respiratory, like invasive or non invasive invasion, is needed to maintain the airway clear of secretion. Different postures affecting vital capacity. Eating position causes decrease in vital capacity. So the following position, it can affect the vital capacity, mostly decrease in vital capacity. First will be the tetrapod position. Next will be the dictatomy position. Next will be the prone position. Next will be the right lateral position. Next will be the left lateral position. Following decrease will be in decrease in vital capacity, nothing but frontal lung position 14.5 percent. Next will be the data that portion. It is the most decrease in vital capacity by causing 18 percent decrease in vital capacity. Next will be the right lateral position, which causes 12 percent decrease in vital capacity. Next will be the prone position, which causes 10 percent decrease in vital capacity, and also left lateral position, which causes 10 percent decrease in vital capacity. Factors, the pathological factors decrease in vital capacity. First will be the alteration in muscle power, mainly due to neuromuscular diseases or any drugs causes alteration in muscle power. Next will be the pulmonary diseases. What are the pulmonary diseases? Mainly pneumonia, bronchitis, asthma, fibrosis, emphysema, and pulmonary edema causes decrease in vital capacity. 
Next, we'll be the space occupying lesions in the chest, mainly tumors, effusion like pleural or pericardial effusion, or any kyphosis. Any abdominal tubers or ascites, it will push the lungs above, so it will push the lungs. Uh, cephalic causes decrease in vital capacity. And in condition causing depression of respiration, nothing but opioids or volatile agents. Mainly drugs causing depression of respiration, opioids and volatile agents. Abdominal splinting, like abdominal binders, tight bandages, hips, paca, spica, all decreases abdominal splint, all decreases vital capacity. Then next will be the abdominal pain. Abdominal pain also decreases vital capacity by 50 to 50 percent and 75 percent in lower and upper abdominal surgeries respectively. Then following posture causes decrease in vital capacity, then the number of 14.5 percent, eta motion 18, 18 position, one position 10 percent, right lateral position 12 percent, left lateral position 10 percent. Allergical factors affecting vital capacity mainly decrease in vital capacity and mainly includes alteration in muscle power, mainly neuromuscular decreases or any drugs. Next, we need a pulmonary diseases causes decrease in vital capacity, pneumonia, chronic pancreatitis, asthma, fibrosis, emphysema, pulmonary edema. Next, we need space occupying lesions in the chest, tumors, pleural or pericardial effusion or kyphoscoliosis causes decrease in vital capacity. Next, will be any abdominal tumors or any ascites or any other condition causes decreasing obesities are decreasing vital capacity. Any condition causing depression of respiration, most commonly drugs like volatile agents or opiates causes decrease in vital capacity. Next in the abdominal painting, like abdominal binders, tight bandages, hip spica causes decrease in vital capacity. Next patient having any abdominal pain in especially in upper and lower abdominal surgeries, vital capacity decreases by 50% in lower and 75% upper abdominal surgery. Next, we will do posture causes decrease in vital capacity, mainly fetal and both in the position, without a position, light red blood, left red position, as well as both position. Next, we will be the functional residual capacity. Functional residual capacity is nothing but volume of air remaining in the lung after normal tidal expiration. It is different from the residual volume. It is nothing but volume of air remaining in the lung after maximum expiration. Normal tidal volume is nothing but 2000. Normal functional residual capacity is nothing but 2300 ml to 3300 ml or 30 to 35 ml per kg. Functional residual capacity is nothing but addition of residual volume plus expiratory reserve volume. It is decreases under anesthesia, mainly with the spontaneous respiration, it decreases by 20% and with paralysis it decreases by 16%. Functional residual capacity is nothing but volume of air remaining in the lung after normal expiration. That is normal volume around 2300 ml. It is nothing but addition of residual volume plus expiratory residual volume. It is decreases under anesthesia with the spontaneous respiration with paralysis. With the spontaneous respiration it decreases by 20%, with paralysis it decreases by 16%. Condition causes increase in functional residual capacity. It mainly increases with height. It is directly proportional to height. Previously, similar to vital capacity, it is directly proportional to height. In erect portion, it is 30% more in the end of point. And the condition with the decreased lung coil like emphysema, gas trapping, functional residual capacity increases. Functional residual capacity is mainly increases with increased height, erect position, and decreased lung coil like emphysema. Functional residual capacity decreases with obesity or any muscle paralysis, especially in supine position. Next, we will be the supine position. Next, pleural effusion also causes functional respiratory capacity decreases. Uh, restrictive lung disease like fibrosis, pregnancy, also obesity, also causes decrease in FRC. Anesthesia procedures 
Parents want to be the answer as well as both decreases functional physical capacity, FRC decreases with age like vital capacity. So, FRC decreases with obesity muscle paralysis, particular posture like supine portion, especially in condition with poor elevation, in restrictive lung diseases like obesity, pregnancy, fibrosis, under anesthesia, especially with the spontaneous repeating as well as muscle paralysis. Functional vascular capacity does not change with age like vital capacity. Because vital capacity decreases with increasing age. Functions of functional residual capacities. Main function is oxygen storage. Next will be the buffer for maintaining the steady arterial partial pressure of oxygen. Next will be the partial inflation helps to prevent arterials. It can minimize the work and breathing. Also minimizes pulmonary vascular resistance and also minimizes ventilatory perfusion mismatch. Also keep the airway less poor. Main functions of functional cellular capacity mainly oxygen storage. Next, we will it act as buffer for maintaining arterial partial pressure of oxygen and partial inflation to prevent atelectasis and also it minimizes work of breathing and also it minimizes pulmonary vascular resistance and also minimize ventilation perfusion mismatch and also keep the airway resistance very low. And next capacity will be the total lung capacity. It is nothing but addition of all lung volume and capacity is nothing but tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume as well as residual volume. It is nothing but maximum volume of air at the inner lung after maximum inspiration. After maximum inspiration amount of air, maximum volume of air at the is nothing but total lung capacity. It's normal around 4000 to 6000 ml or 80 to 100 ml per kg. Total lung capacity is nothing but vital capacity plus residual volume. Vital capacity is nothing but thyroid volume plus expiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume. Total lung capacity is nothing but thyroid volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. Total lung capacity is nothing but maximum volume of air attained in the lung after maximum inspiration. Normal value around 4000 to 6000 ml. In ml per kg, it is nothing but 8 to 80 to 100 ml per kg. Total lung capacity nothing but vital capacity plus less fuel volume. Vital capacity nothing but tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume. In total lung capacity, tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. Next, we will proceed to dynamic capacities. Dynamic capacities like post vital capacity FEV1. Post vital capacity, nothing but maximum volume of air, which can be expired out as forcefully and rapidly as possible following maximum inspiration. In normal NT subjects, having vital capacity equal to functional post vital capacity. Post vital capacity in one second, nothing but FEV1. Post expiratory expired volume in one second during post vital capacity maneuver. It is expired as expressed as absolute volume or percentage of FVC. Normal FEV1 one second is 75 to 85 percent of post vital capacity. FEV2 that is post expiratory volume 2, nothing but at 2 seconds, is nothing equal to 94 percent of post vital capacity. Post expiratory expired volume in FE. We in the in three second 97 percent of post vital capacity. Dynamic volume and capacity mostly post vital capacity. First, it is a maximum volume of air which can be exploited forcefully rapidly as possible following maximum inspiration. In normal activities, the vital capacity equal post vital capacity. Post vital capacity in one second, nothing but forced expired forced expired volume in one second during post vital capacity minimum. It is expressed as absolute volume or percentage of post vital capacity. Normal FEV1 at one second is nothing but 70 equal to 75 to 85 percentage of post vital capacity. Post vital capacity two at two seconds, nothing but 94% of post vital capacity. <coughs> 
Post white expired volume three nothing but three second it is ninety seven percent of post vital capacity. PF for nothing but peak expiratory flow rate. It is the maximum flow rate during forced vital capacity maneuver in the initial 0.1 second. Normal volume, nothing but normal PFR is nothing but 450 to 700 liter per minute in male or female 300 to 500 liter per minute. Clinical significance, nothing but volume less than 200 liter per minute, as is in especially in condition with impaired coughing and slightly out of post op complication. PFR that is nothing but peak expiratory flow rate. It is the maximum flow rate during forced vital capacity maneuver in the initial 0.1 second. Normal volume normal in males nothing but 450 to 700 liter per minute. In female 300 to 500 liter per minute. In clinical significance, it is especially discreet condition with impaired coughing and in likelihood of post op complication. That is value less than 200 liter per minute. The gap showing x axis time is mentioned, y axis expired volume is later mentioned. This is the graph showing force weighted capacity at first second. We can measure the force expiratory volume, force expired volume at one second, nothing but FTV. We can see the uh, peak expiratory flow rate before force expiratory, force expired volume at one second. Sorry. Next, we can see the FEF, nothing but first meet expiratory flow rate. This is a maximum FEF between 25 to 75 percent. This is the maximum flow rate during meet expiratory part of FVC maneuver. The normal volume. Value around 4.5 to 5 liter per second or 300 liter per minute. The clinical significance of FEF 25 to 75% it is the sensitive and first indicator of obstruction of small airway. This is the graph showing post expiratory, post mid expiratory flow rate at 25%, 50%, and 25%. It is the flow volume curve. Showing inspiration in the below the x-axis and the expression above the x-axis. It starts with tidal volume as well as total lung tidal tidal volume. It's the fourth total tidal volume, tidal volume, and total lung capacity. This is the force. It is the uh, force uh, inspiratory flow 25 percent, 50 percent. It's the force expired. Uh, post meet the expiratory flow rate at 25 percent, 50 percent, at 75 percent. This is a, a total of post vital capacity. This is the PEF as well as maximum expired flow rate as well as peak expired flow rate. Next, we can see the maximum breathing capacity or maximum voluntary ventilation. It is the largest volume can be breathed per minute by voluntary effort as hard and fast as possible. Normals around 150 to 75 liter per minute measured for 12 seconds. It is then it is extrapolated for one minute. Maximum voluntary ventilation that is nothing but FEV1 into 35. Discrepancy between FEV1 and MV means inconsistent and submaximal inspiratory effort. Next will be the maximum breathing capacity or maximum voluntary ventilation altered by airway resistance, elastic property, mass extent. Learning coordination as well as motivation. Periods longer than 15 seconds should not be allowed because maximum monitor ventilation is markedly decreased in patients with the emphysema. Air restriction to one patient with poor respiratory muscle. FEV1 into 35 is a good indicator of maximum monitor ventilation. 
disability criteria or still require actual MB maximum voluntary ventilation to be done. Respiratory muscle strength, nothing but maximum inspiratory pressure as well as maximum expiratory pressure. A number of motor neuron diseases results in respiratory muscle weakness lead to respiratory failure. This affects not only the chest wall but the diaphragm also. Serial vital capacity help to diagnose this like Kuldian Barry syndrome and fall in vital capacity below 1 liter warrants mechanical support in such patients. Maximum inspiratory pressure is nothing but inspiratory mouth pressure. This measure the inspiratory muscle function when wearing the patient generate as much as inspiratory pressure against block the mouth. The pressure generated that nothing but maximum inspiratory pressure therefore a function of inspiratory muscle rather than the lung volume and does not change significantly over the pressure. Normal volume is nothing but uh, normal value is 100 cm of water. If a value more than 8 cm of water excludes inspiratory muscle weakness. Maximal expiratory pressure, MEP, nothing but expiratory mode pressure. This measure expiratory muscle function when the patient generates expiratory pressure against block in the mouthpiece. This pressure generated is nothing but maximal expiratory pressure. This is often called as MIP or MEP, that is nothing but maximum expiratory pressure and expiratory pressure. The fall in vital capacity by more than 25% in supine portion from erect portion includes indicates diaphragmatic paralysis. Normal decrease in vital capacity from erect to supine is nothing but 5%. Let's say here, the first test we put a rubber as bed holding test. Ask the patient to take full and but not deep to deep breath and hold as long as possible. The patient can hold more than 25 seconds normal cardiopulmonary reserve. If it is between 15 to 25 seconds, it is a limited cardiopulmonary reserve. If it is less than 15 seconds, very poor cardiopulmonary reserve. Because 35, 25 to 30 seconds generate 3,500 of vital capacity. 20 to 25 seconds generate 3,000 ml of vital capacity. 15 to 20 seconds generate 2,500 vital capacity. 10 to 15 seconds generate 2,000 ml vital capacity. 5 to 10 seconds generate 1,500 ml vital capacity. Second, we will do a single breath count. After deep breath, hold it and start counting till the next breath. Indicate vital capacity. Normal count is nothing but 30 to 40 count. Let the Schneider match by test. It measures maximum breathing capacity. Ask the person to blow a matchstick from the distance of 6 inches or 15 centimeter with wide more open, chin the stretch supported, no first slipping, no head movement, no air movement in the room, mouth and match at the same level. Cannot blow out a match. Maximum breathing capacity less than 60 liters per minute and FEV1 less than 1.6 liters per minute. Able to blow out the match, then patient maximum breathing capacity more, more than 60 liters per minute, post expired volume more than 1.6 liter. Modified matches, distance nothing but 9 inch, 6 inch range. Maximum breathing capacity is more than normal around 150 to 175 liters per minute. Patient able to match blow at the distance of 9 inches, having mag MB is more than 150 liter per minute. Patient able to match blow at the distance of 6 inches, which is mag MB is but more than 6 liter per minute. At the distance of 3 inches, MB is more than 40 liter per minute. Greeny Barovich soft test. Ask the patient to deep breath, followed by cup. Patient having ability to cough, then having patient of adequate effectiveness and vital capacity three times per FHB cuff. We have a protective cough, self propagator paroxysmal coughing, patient subject to pulmonary complication. This test, patient asks to take the five deep breath, then arms contain between the shoulder breath to check the presence or absence of breeze. Then post expiry time. I think but after deep breath, exhale maximally, forcibly and keep stretch over the trachea and listen. Normal forced expiratory time is around 3 to 5 seconds. In obstructive lung disease, more than 6 seconds. In restrictive lung disease, it is less than 3 seconds. Then de bono omission test, which measures PEFR. Patient blow down here, bite wood at the end of which is a whistle on the side, or with adjustable arm. The subject were a whistle blows. The equal is gradually increased till the intensity of whistle disappears. At the last portion, where the whistle can be blown, the PFR is from the scale. Read off the scale.
right? Respirable meter measure tidal volume and weight ventilation. It is a simple and rapid, can be connected to the endotracheal tube or face mask. Fair examination of patient is needed, ideally done in sitting position. Minute volume instrument record for one minute and record directly. Tidal volume calculated by dividing minute volume by counting respiratory rate. Next will be the bedside fungal body function. There is nothing but bedside pulse oximetry. Then next will be the arterial blood glass analysis. Arterial blood glass analysis give more important information regarding gas oxygen and oxygen delivery duration. Issues. Type 1 respiratory failure is defined as the partial pressure of oxygen less than 8 kPa with the normal PaCO2 in, the, in pneumonia and pulmonary embolism. Type 2 respiratory failure is nothing but whenever hypoxia accompanied with hypercapnia. That is, PaCO2 is more than 6.5 kPa. This is observed in ventilator failure as in respiratory muscle weakness and COP. In type 1 respiratory failure, hypoxia with normal PaCO2. In type 2 respiratory failure, hypoxia associated with hypercapnia. Categorization of PA pulmonary function test. First will be mechanical ventilation of lung and chest wall. First will be diastatic lung volume and capacity is nothing but vital capacity, inspiratory capacity, inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume, residual volume, plus and functional residual capacity. Dynamic lung volume and capacity is nothing but forced vital capacity, and forced expired volume one, forced mid expiratory fluid from 50 to 70 percentage, peak expiratory flow rate, maximum volatile ventilation, respiratory muscle strength. Then ventilation test will be tidal volume, mechanical uh, minute volume, and respiratory rate. Categorization of pulmonary function test. And next will be the gas exchange test. First will be the mechanical ventilation function of lung and chest for Next will be the gas exchange test. This is based on alveolar arterial partial pressure of oxygen gradient, diffusion capacity, gas distribution test, particularly single bed nitrogen test, multiple bed nitrogen test, and helium dilution method. Uh, the ventilation perspiration test include ABG single bed CO elimination test. Then next category will be the cardiopulmonary interaction based on qualitative and quantitative tests. Qualitative tests based on history and examination, quantitative tests based on six minute walk test, ABG stat cleaning test, as well as that walk test. In this quantitative test, six minute walk test is the gold standard. Spirometry is the cornerstone of all PSDs. John Hutchinson, who invented spirometry. Spirometry is a medical test that measures the volume of air and individual inhales or exhales as a function of time. It measures vital capacity, forced vital capacity, forced expired volume 1, and peak expiratory for it. But it cannot measure decibel volume. Also, functional cell capacity and the total number of feet. Any lung volume capacity which have decibel volume, spirometry cannot be able to measure the uh, that volume and capacities to those having crystal volume. Following precaution to be observed, the body position has significant impact of spirometry, especially in post vital capacity and vital capacity. The values are 8 and 2 percent lower, especially in supernatural occupation compared to standing being the preferred position. Increased peak expiratory flow is seen in hyperextension of neck due to elongation and stiffening of flexion. Flexion of neck decreases peak flow and increases airway resistance. Spirometry is effort dependent and subdominant results obtained if the patient has chest and abdominal pain due to any cause are unable to follow instructions. Flow volume curves and spirogram. Two ways to record the results of post vital capacity measure. Flow volume curve follow. In this, flow meter measure the flow rate in liter per second upon exhalation. Flow further as function of volume. In classical spirogram, volume function as, volume as function of time. The flow volume loop. So in in x axis, there will be a tongue volume and capacity. Below the excess inspiration, above excess is expiration. At peak, there will be peak expiration for it. Assumption obtained from FVC curve. FVV1, the volume excess during first seconds of post vital chemistry minimum. We have a post expired, mid expiratory flow rate, nothing but. 25 to 75 percent, there is a mean expiratory flow during middle of all the post vital capacity whenever reflects through the small that is nothing but less than 2 millimeter diameter diapase. Then next will be the first vital capacity, post expert volume 1 to the ratio of post vital capacity. The ratio of FEV1 to the FPC in the other important value because the reduction of ratio from external is specific for obstructive error in the distributive spirometry. Interpretation means if based upon 
FPC and FEV1. Interpretation of prediction is 80 to 130 percent normal in FPC, 20 to 70 percent mild reduction, 50 to 79 percent moderate reduction, less than 50 percent severe reduction. In FEV1, interpretation nothing but more than 75 percent normal, 60 to 75 percent mild reduction, 50 to 79 percent moderate absorption, less than 49 severe absorption. Then FEV post experiment with experiment for 25 to 75 percent interpretation based on more than 79 percent normal 60 to 79 percent mild obstruction 40 to 79 percent moderate obstruction less than 40 percent severe obstruction then if you want to fbc ratio is interpretation based on 80 or, or higher normal 79 or lower abnormal virometry interpretation for continuous as obstructive as well as restrictive i mean in obstructive this is limitation of expiratory airflow airway cannot empty as rapidly compared to normal Air errors from the upper space and limit length. The example of obstructive lung disease, asthma emphysema, 65 plus. Restrictive lung disease can be reduced lung volume and decreased lung complex. Examples are intestinal fibrosis, power scoliosis, obesity, lung defection, neuromuscular diseases, cystic fibrosis. Obstructive disease, this is a difference between obstructive and restrictive. FEC normal or decrease in obstructive lung disease, FEC decreases in restrictive lung disease. FEV1 decreases in Decreased in both in obstructive and restrictive lung disease. FEF 25 to 75 percent decreased in obstructive lung disease, which is normal to decreased in restrictive lung disease. The ratio FEV1 to FBC ratio decreased in obstructive lung disease, normal or increased in restrictive lung disease. Total lung capacity normal or increased in obstructive lung disease, which is decreased in restrictive lung disease. In restrictive lung disease, all the tidal volume and capacities, all the volume and capacity increases except the FEV1 to FBC ratio, it is normal to increase. Measurement of volume using that is total lung capacity RV and function, residual volume function using nitrogen washout method, inert gas, helium dilution method, and total body pathoscopy. Nitrogen washout method, nothing but patient breathes in under pressure oxygen and an expiration of the nitrogen is washout. The excel volume and nitrogen concentration it, it can be measured. The difference between nitrogen volume as the initial concentration and the final excel concentration, allotic capacitation, intrathoracic volume, especially FRC. Helium dilution technique the patient breathe and enough from the reservoir with a long volume of gas containing the test of animal. Helium gets diluted by gas previous to the second. Usually, patient connected at the end, tidal motion of the pyrometry, that both the lung volume is measured as efforts. Body plethysmography. Plethysmography divided from a Greek one meaning enlargement. Based on principle of Boyle's law, pressure and the volume equal to constant. A patient uh, placed on the sitting position in the closed box with known volume. Patient breathes with open gratis against the closed shutter to produce change in box pressure proportional to the volume of air in the chest. As the measurement done at the end of expiration, it yields FS. This is the body where the patient sitting in a closed loop and in and patient breathes with the closed gratis. Measurement of air resistance. Based on body blood smoke, post expired minimum PEF for FEV1 and response to bronchodilator FEV1. Pyrometric pre and post bronchodilators. Patient with uh, small airway obstruction tested twice before after the administration of bronchodilator to evaluate response. Two out of three measurements include a patient with reversible airway obstruction that is responsive to medication. FEC increases of 10% abnormal, FEV1 increases to 100 ml of 15% of black line, or FEF 25 to 75% or gives up 20% or more. Low volume blood, do FEC minimal and then inhale rapidly and as much as possible. Well, make, make the inspiratory cover. The inspiratory and expiratory flow volume covers put together as low volume blue. This is a flow volume blue. It is divided into inspiration phase below x axis and expiration phase above x axis. In x axis, volume in liter, in y axis, flow rate is present. First one third of the expiratory flow, first one third will be the effort dependent, and final two third will be. In effort independent. Expiratory cover is entirely effort dependent. Ratio of maximum expiratory flow to the maximum expiratory flow that is made VC ratio, which is only one. Flow volume new provide information of upper airway obstruction. Fixed obstruction is a constant airflow limitation on both on inspiration and expiration. These are the following examples. First, fixed obstruction, venous fixed, right air, endotracheal neoplasm, bronchi stenosis. The variable expiration or thoracic obstruction, inspiration is normal, expiration is inspiration is normal, expiration is abnormal. In condition classing, variable intrathoracic like trachea monosa, polycondyl, tumors of lower trachea and mild value, the narrowing is mostly in expiration because of increasing intrathoracic pressure, compressing the airways. Low volume loops should be greater reduction in expiratory phase. Obstructive lung disease, 
nothing but increase in tidal volume, increase in fucking volume capacity as well as the volume. In the city lung means all the tidal volume and capacity, all the volume and capacity decreases except the FE1 to FP ratio is normal or increased. In the city, FP Actually, you know, FEC is more reduced compared to FEV1, which is so the ratio will be normal or increased. In obstructive lung disease, loop shifts to the left due to decrease in lung volume and capacity. Due to increase in lung volume, it is shift to the right, it is a normal portion due to loop shift to the right due to decrease in lung volume and capacity. Very low dosage obstruction disease. Expiration is normal, but inspiration is affected. Condition causing extra thoracic variable extra thoracic obstruction, nothing but bilateral and unilateral vocal cord paralysis, vocal cord constriction, chronic neuromuscular disease, airway burns, as well as obstructive sleep. As per gas diction concept, alveolar this alveolar arterial oxygenation gradient is essentially indicated by detecting regional ventilation perfusion in the normal value in young adult at two is 8 to 25 mm of mercury, abnormal eye volume at two mat is seen in asymptomatic smoke and chronic bucket. Then the diff next will be the diffusion capacity of lung, it is in the plate at which the gas enters the lung, and diffusion lung capacity of measured by using carbon monoxide, high affinity of HP. Because carbon monoxide IH which is 200 times more than that of oxygen, so they are not directly built up in plasma. And the normal quantity is low blood concentration of 0 and pulmonary concentration also 0. Single blood test using carbon monoxide pressure inspired the added volume of carbon monoxide over the blood for 10 seconds. Carbon monoxide is the gagement defined by infrared analysis. Diffusion lung capacity for carbon monoxide, nothing but carbon monoxide at ml per minute by meter per minute divided by. Partial alveolar carbon monoxide minus partial arterial carbon monoxide. <coughs> <coughs> normal, sorry. Normal range is between 20 to 30 ml per minute per millimeter of mercury. Diffusion lung capacity of carbon monoxide decreases in condition with emphysema, lung restriction, pulmonary embolism, also anemia, pulmonary fibrosis, or cardiosis with increased thickness. DLC1 increase in condition causes increase in pulmonary movement, spine motion, excess obesity, and loss. Test for cardiopulmonary interaction because it <coughs> reflects gas section, ventilation tissue, oxygen, carbon dioxide. Quality, it is given to qualitative quantity. Qualitative based on history examination, quantitative based on AVG, stat, images, clinic models, pattern models. Stat, the patient able to claim three flights of air without stopping or dipnea, delivery day, decreased mortality, and Mortality. Patient not able to claim two flights that way higher risk. When it only is gold standard cardiopulmonary result is measured by using estimating maximum oxygen uptake during exit. Modified if patient cannot walk. Bicycle or arm access. Patient able to walk for more than 2000 feet during six minutes. Maximal oxygen consumption more than 50 ml per kg per minute. If 1080 feet in six seconds, volume maximal oxygen consumption will be 12 mg per. 12 ml per kg per minute. Seven ten is oxygenated done and the SPO2 falls in more person high risk. Shuttle walk compression walk between 10 cm apart between cones that is 10, 10 meters apart with increasing phase subject walks until they cannot make the more cone to the cone between the big. Less than 250 meters or decrease of circulation more than 4 percent signal high risk. The shuttle walk of 350 meters correlate with oxygen consumption max of 11 ml per kg per minute. More patient having claiming five flights of stairs, they are having uh, accident consumption more than 20, low mortality after pneumonectomy. If more than three flights of stairs, low mortality after low gunpoint. More than two flights of more than two men having accident consumption less than the so it with high mortality. Predictive post op pulmonary complication is having following criteria. Then a middle age criteria that is FE1 less than one minute and normal PAO2 or PAC having low risk of post op pulmonary complication. If you want less than one minute, low partial pressure volume and normal partial pressure carbon volume, patient will need prolonged oxygen supplementation. If you want less than one liter, low partial pressure volume, high partial pressure carbon dioxide, patient need post op ventilation. Based on spirometry, treat FEC less than 50%, treat a FE1 less than 50%, treat a MEV less than 50%. Thank you. And thank you for the patient listening.